Oh, good evening, everybody. Keith here. Hoping everybody's having a good day, enjoying life, living life, loving life. Gonna hang out for a couple minutes. Look, see if we can get some people on here. I know it's kind of late where I'm at here, but maybe people on the uh, west coast will still be up or west of me. But I wanted to get on tonight and talk about hospital and uh, how it's related to HUD and of course how that's the initial um, point of bifurcation between the land document and commercial documents. <coughs> so it's no wonder HUD is involved at that level as well. But the main thing to realize is that this is the, the point of origin of all the census information which is, which is all the data elements and subsequently how they're filed or where they're filed so with that we're going to get started and this is a uh, definition right out of their own code folks so please don't believe me, don't believe your government, do your own research and see that you'll find it the exact same thing. This is from Title 24, the CFR 242.1. To 24 CFR 242.1. And as we can see, it says hospital means a facility. And remember, that's the root of face. It's on the face. That has been proposed for approval or has been approved by HUD. So no other facility is named in this part under the provisions of this subpart and the provisions or that provides community services for inpatient medical care. The HUD. HUD is what every hospital is approved under. Housing and herbal, urban development. Number one, it says uh, that provides community services for inpatient medical care of the sick or injured. And then in parentheses it says including obstetrical care. You guys know what obstetrical care is. Every woman that goes into labor. And then when we look at 42 U.S. Code 1395X it says definitions. We click on that. Definitions. The first one it says for the purpose of this purposes of this subchapter, a spell of illness. The term spell of illness. Oh, and let's make sure we know Title 42. That's the public health and welfare. So that's and we're talking about hospitals, and it says the term spell of illness with respect to any individual means a period of consecutive days. Beginning with the first day, mom goes into the hospital in labor, and it says not included in a previous spell of illness. So that's her first day, she registers, on which such individual is furnished inpatient hospital services, inpatient critical access hospital services, or extended care services, including obstetrical care, inpatient medical care which occurs in a month for which he is entitled to benefits mom is entitled to benefits now the first day that baby is born on which such individuals furnished in patient hospital services beginning with that baby's first day now the hospital needs a social security number for that baby they do it under the mom, currently induced. We're not more than 50% of the total patient days during any year are customarily assignable 
assignable. That's a trust term. To the categories of chronic, convalescent, and rest. Drug and alcoholic. Epileptic. Mental deficiency. Mental. Nervous and mental. And tuberculosis. Except that the 50% patient day restriction does not apply to critical access hospitals. Hospitals designated as such under the Medicare Rural Hospital Flexibility Program. So when mom goes into the hospital, no matter what kind of hospital it is, they have a Medicare Rural Hospital Flexibility Program. So that portion of the hospital, that particular room under that contract can be contracted as a critical care hospital because of the inpatient services provided in that room. That is a facility licensed or regulated by the state or if there is no such state law providing for such licensing or regulation by the state, by the municipality or other political subdivision. I'm telling you, hospitals are political subdivisions. They have nothing to do with your care, your health and welfare, except in the political forum in which the facility is located. They're telling you that facility only is only located in a fictional overlay. It is not real. It is only a mental creation. So let's talk about the mental capacity and whether that hospital actually exists in a political subdivision on a map or if it's a hospital in reality providing natural care to people <laughs> known as neighbors. Are they really some kind of political subdivision? Or is it all in their mental delusions, their mental deficiencies? Do they not know the truth that a political subdivision is intangible? It cannot be real. A public facility owned by a state or unit of local government or by an instrumentality thereof. The municipality is an instrumentality. They are not a government. It is a corporation under the instrumentality of a local government or state. And their codes are written by a publishing company that interprets the legislative word. It is not legislation. It is an interpretation that they put forth as a corporate policy over the municipal area. Still only a political subdivision. Or owned by a public benefit corporation established by a state or unit of local government or by an instrumentality thereof. The municipality, again, is that public benefit corporation established by a state or unit of local government or by an instrumentality thereof. The instrumentality of the government is the corporate entity. It is all commercial. That is their instrumentality. It's a financial war, spiritual war. A proprietary facility or a facility of a private, non-profit corporation or association. So if they're not profit, I want people to think about this. If they're a proprietary facility, I want people to think about that. If they're a public facility owned by a state or unit of local government or an instrumentality thereof or owned by a public benefit corporation established by a state or unit of local government or by an instrumentality thereof.
What is its purpose for you? Are you aware of the hospitals where the census is originated? The census is governed and regulated by the Department of Commerce. And yet here we have somebody that is either a nonprofit or proprietary or supposedly a public benefit corporation. Or is it a public facility owned by a state or unit of local government? Or an instrumentality thereof? Now let me ask. That public facility owned by a state or unit of local government. Which is a political subdivision. Which is intangible. So if the political subdivision known as a state or unit of local government is intangible itself, how can they own a public facility? And if they can't own a public facility... If they, sorry about that. If they can't own a public facility... Then how can they control the census? How can they control uh, the enforcement of giving them any kind of information, particularly if they're not for, for profit or a proprietary facility? See, if they're, if they're a political subdivision and you go to the hospital um, to give birth under your labor, are you, are you giving everything up to a political subdivision? Or are you correcting the record right from the start? That you went to the hospital under the, the, the presumption that it was a hospital and not a political subdivision. See, it, it's telling you that is a facility licensed or regulated by the state. So if it's licensed or regulated by the state and the state statutes are all contracts themselves and that means they have to be in contract with the state. And if they're in contract with the state as a po political subdivision, then what is the purpose of the hospital? Is it as a political subdivision or is it for the health and welfare? I have serious questions. <clears throat> and I hope you guys are paying attention because this is what your hospitals are doing. They're, portray they're portraying that they're a hospital for the health and welfare of the mothers and children, giving no concern about the father unless they need a paternity document for commercial purposes. And yet, they're either supposedly a pri proprietary um, setup, a non-profit setup, or a political subdivision. So, what does that all have to do, do with you? If they're non-profit, then how can they charge you? Um, if they're uh, proprietary, then what is their source of documentation saying that you are part of their proprietary um, setup? And if they're professing that they're proprietary, but posing uh, public advertising uh, to the general public, for anybody that can walk in the door, just by signing the documentation, does that make them a member of your association? No. You have to learn how to line item veto through their registration documents and stuff so you can get out of there without this documentation so I'm going to see if I can remember this um, other one here because I helped a friend a couple years ago in regards to um, getting in and out of the hospital There we are. And I want to read this to you. It's not real long. It's four pages. So hopefully you guys will be up for a little bit. Let me read this. Because this is important. This is how you go through the system. By asking questions appropriately. Um, he did make a mistake in here. And I, I did get on him about it. But um, generally he did an excellent job. And you'll, you'll comprehend that he's the only one that's pushing this law in his house. Because this woman is not 
familiar with this stuff. So he had to do it for her, and this is why it's so important for the, the dads to step up and do your part, people. Get up there and not only ask questions, but catch that baby. Um, let them know you're in command. Um, your, your woman is in labor pains and can't think competently in those matters, but you can. And that's what we need to do to protect the family. So the background is he's not married. The son's mother is not into the freedom information at all, like we told you. Or, like I said, several compromises had to be made. But despite those compromises, it was just a matter of going back and, and um, doing a little more research than what he'd already done. So he says they agreed no, on no vaccinations, and he couldn't get her to budge on doing home birth. And that's because they were in need of uh, C-section. The baby was breech. So it was a good idea to actually go to the hospital in this particular birth, knowing that the baby was breech. Um, it's always good to have them at your side and have the ability to contract with them for those means, for those necess necessities of life, but not for the commercial purposes. So they, um, he warned her they, they would be sneaky and trying to get her to sign paperwork, and he told her just don't sign anything unless they both read it first. His goal was to get um, the baby out of there with no type of registration at all, no birth certificate, no social security number, no name, and walk out with the placenta, which they did do. So they went in for the C-section. He was allowed to be in the operating room on the condition that he sat in the chair behind the mother's head. He was actually reprimanded a couple times for standing up and at the last minute made a request for the placenta while she was under the knife. She, he just got someone's attention and told them we'd like to keep that as it was being removed. Everyone is healthy after surgery and they go to the recovery room, get settled in, and he runs home to the shower and grabs some food. He's not gone more than 45 minutes and in that time, they approached her about vaccines. We agreed on no vaccines. And they approached her with a packet about vaccines and paperwork that included a request for a birth certificate, a birth certificate work sheet. They wanted her to work while she was induced, while she was still under uh, medication and stuff request for a social security number you're not allowed to request a social security number unless you owe a debt to the united states okay this is where they try to get you in owing a debt to the united states and telling you you have to request a social security number for the first day of that baby's life where they furnished it inpatient hospital services, you now owe the United States a debt. So you need to get a social security number for that baby. Nope. Nope. The mom owes the debt. The baby doesn't. So there is no requirement. If mom already has a social security number, she can provide that social security number. You are not required to get a social security number for the baby. And they tell you because it's a request. They also speak about a commemorative birth certificate. We'll talk about that. All the paperwork was already filled in. This is fraud. You cannot put somebody's intent down on a document that has options. You are to allow them to fill in the options. You are to allow them to do the line item veto through things and overwrite if they need to. This is out of line. Just because you have the form and you want to hurry up and rush it through doesn't mean you have the capacity to fill it out prior to a signature. You have to offer the form in open form as it is and let them fill it out. All they needed was her signature. The options were already selected and signed by a witness. That's the wrong way to do it. 
Again, they're supposed to hand it to you, let you fill it out, let you sign it, and then they can amend it if it needs to be further amended and sign it then. They cannot fill it out and then sign it and then offer it to you as if though you have no opportunity to change the options. When they mark down the options and then you go through and try to cross out those options, it makes for shitty looking paperwork and that's not the right process. Period. It's, it's, called, it's called a worksheet for a reason. She told them we would be foregoing vaccinations at that time as well. They never brought up vaccinations again. After thinking about this, I am sure that they never brought vaccinations up again because before they can give vaccinations, they must have that birth certificate application. They must have the worksheet and the, the request for a social security number. They can't provide any more services for their research programs until it's funded. Um, they never brought up vaccines again. Uh, the first night with the baby. Just the three of them all night. The nurses coming in every hour or more. They make the first request for the birth certificate pack at around 2 in the morning. At that point, they'd been up, he'd been up for 48 hours. Mom tells him we haven't gone over the paperwork yet paperwork yet no problem they make another request for the paper around five in the morning in the morning or the same response we haven't looked at it yet no problem the day after the first night the family coming and going nurses coming and going every couple of hours they would ask for the birth certificate packet i didn't want to give them outright decline until they had been cleared for discharge Cleared for discharge. Remember, we've been talking about this in reconciling the uh, master trust account. We're talking about clearance and discharge and release of services and stuff. All those debts and everything, they're all debt instruments, offers and advertisements going through the postal service and their securities. We're supposed to clear them for discharge. Head nurse comes and checks them and says everything was good. That now they are just waiting for the doctor to sign the discharge papers and they would be able to leave. Now comprehend people. The doctor has no obligation to hold these people whatsoever. His only obligation is to make sure the required paperwork is filled out. If the patient is the one that's required to fill the paperwork out and doesn't want to fill it out, then all they have to do is say information was not provided. They cannot force information of a contract if the party does not wish to contract further. They can limit the contract. Listen, the baby was born. We're done. We no longer need your services. You're ready to clear us, saying that you agree we no longer need your services, but yet you think that you have to provide us paperwork to provide further services. That's not part of your service. This is inconsistent. We have to point this stuff out. So they make another request for the birth certificate packet. I say, yes, of course, we'll look over and sign them right now. This is the point where I told him he was wrong. You cannot lie to these peop people. You cannot tell them, yes, of course, we'll look them over and sign them right now when you don't intend to sign them. Don't do that. Oh, sure, l let me look over them right now. That's all he had to say. Don't lie, people. No matter what. Nurse says she will bring in another staff member to collect the paperwork. Collect the paperwork. They are collecting a debt because by requesting the Social Security number, you are admitting you owe the United States a debt. So they are coming to collect the debt. They are now debt collectors. A tech comes in very excited that she heard we are cleared to go home. She heard we're cleared to go home. Already cleared. So now the doctor just has to sign it. 
discharging them. They're already cleared. Swoons over baby for a bit, and then, matter-of-factly, no big deal, informs us that since we are not married, Dad will need to sign a dec- this declaration of paternity. Really? Dad does? Can anybody else verify that he's not the dad? That he didn't catch the baby? That he didn't make the request for keeping the placenta? That he didn't have the right to do so? All of a sudden, now you want to ask for paternity? You didn't question his paternity when he sat at the head of the mother's head. How come you weren't asking paternity then? Were you not qualified to ask for paternity then? Are you now qualifying the question of paternity in a commercial sense? Most certainly. They made it seem like just a minor formality, but also such a great benefit. We decided we aren't going to be needing a birth certificate. And this is where things started to get creepy for them. Comprehend the rest of what's going on here, people. It's very important. The woman blinked a couple times and couldn't come up with a coherent coherent response because she's not used to people doing that. Oh, we decided we won't be needing a birth certificate. Just to the effect of, okay, yes, no problem. Uh, Yeah, I'll just let the birth certificate clerk know. Now you know the reason of the birth certificate. Because it's a clerk action. It's a commercial transaction. If you're already committed to the commercial transaction with the registration at the hospital, then why do you need the birth certificate to start another commercial transaction in the name of a baby who can't contract yet and request a social security number saying he's the one that owes the debt. When your own law says he can't possibly owe the debt for another 18 years. This is just inconsistent babble, people. Then she checks a couple things on my son's mother. Then she remembers her task was to get the signed papers. She says, now, okay, I'm going to check because I'm not sure if you are allowed to not sign those papers. So actually, let me go check about that for you. She's under the presumption that they're not allowed to not sign those papers. They already have the presumption that they're not supposed to let anybody out that hospital without signing the birth certificate uh, documentation worksheet and 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 requesting a social security number. Now, a doctor comes in 20 minutes later, pretends to check on mom. Then he says, hey, I heard you guys had some questions about the birth certificate form. No. They didn't have any questions. They already comprehended what was going on and rebutted it. Something you guys didn't understand? See, they're trying to push something that these people are mentally incompetent and don't understand. They understand perfectly well what's going on. No, we just decided to get him a birth certificate on our own. Now watch. The doctor says, oh, okay, I'm not sure if you will be able to do that. Really? Really? Why don't you go ask any church? Ask any church if they've got a registry to certify the birth of somebody a new heir to the congregation. Something, something. Let me just go check on that for you guys. I think you might, you guys might have to sign it. Is that an opinion? Because if that's your opinion, make sure you bring back that law and make sure it's not a statute or an executive order 
that can only be implemented under contract terms and conditions because that would require consent. And like I said, I do not consent. And this is from a physician, guys. He's a doctor practicing medicine, trying to implicate that he can practice legal determinations for commercial practices. For a non-profit or a sole proprietor or a political subdivision. All of which are intangible fiction presumptions. I hadn't seen him before, but he says he was in on the surgery. Huh. I think I recognized everybody in the, in the rooms when I was in there. Now the head registered nurse who had seen, most, seen us the most often came in, does the quick checks, and then says, So, what is the deal? Are you guys not wanting a birth certificate for baby? Now, remember, he said, um, we had just decided to get him a birth certificate on, their own, on our own. And this nurse comes in and says, So what's the deal? Are you guys not wanting a birth? No, we never said that. We plan on getting it on our own. So he reiterates, we are planning to get one on our own. Okay, I'm pretty sure you guys will be able to do that. Oh! You mean we have a registered nurse that says she is pretty sure you guys will be able to do that when some other nurse says, no, I think you, have, you cannot not sign it and a doctor says that you think you have to sign it come on how inconsistent is this what is your regulation and where are you guys getting your information are you guys all on the same page here i'm feeling kind of miffed about this surgery we just had with you guys are you incompetent what is your mental deficiency here are you the ones that need the inpatient hospital care Come on, let's get real. However, and I do not know your guy's situation. Great, I appreciate that admittance. Proves we are foreign. But I think if you do that on your own, it is very expensive. Guys, a tip. I'll print you one for a dollar. It'll be blank. You can fill it out yourself. And it uses biblical scripture instead of political grammar, medical grammar, commercial grammar, religious grammar, or, or anything else. I'm not sure how much. Something like $500, I believe. I think I'll let you buy a... I, I think I'll exchange a, a, one Federal Reserve note for each blank birth certificate. So are you sure? And that's an even exchange. That's a trade. That's not a purchase or a sale. I'm not buying or selling anything. You guys aren't buying or... We're going to exchange one of my birth certificates printed up um, blank and I'll send it to you and you send me a one Federal Reserve note. It's free. Just do it here. Really? It's free. I have to claim that my son now owes a debt and issue a commercial negotiable instrument you call that free again I ask for your competency in making these determinations so he politely declines says okay I will have to send the birth certificate clerk or send in the birth certificate clerk oh so now we're going to talk to somebody that knows what they're talking about huh and it's a birth certificate clerk um, somebody practicing commerce in a place where people practice medicine? Are they co-mingling jurisdictions? Gee, let me talk to the lawyer then. Let's really mingle the, these things up. How about we get a four-square dance going and bring in the, uh, uh, the, the chaplain too? Now we've got a doctor, we've got a lawyer, we've got a clerk, and we've got a clerk. Or should it be chaplain? Oops! The birth certificate clerk shows up, bubbly. He says, it's her understanding that we are declining to sign the birth certificate or get the baby a social security number. 
We affirm that is the case. Okay, perfect. That's not a problem at all. Coming from the birth certificate clerk, I will leave all the boxes blank. No personal information. Oh, you mean you can do that? No personal information provided, just like I said before. So, fully aware of our right to decline to sign these documents, she puts on a performance, trying all types of emotional manipulations to get us to reconsider. She was referred to as the birth certificate clerk. They didn't know this position existed, but feel that needs more research. Very clearly, she had a deep, vested interest in having us sign. If nobody signs the birth certificate, then there is no need for a clerk at the hospital, particularly one that is non-profit or a political subdivision. Get it, folks? The only reason for a hospital, for you to go to a hospital, in their eyes, is to commit to a commercial transaction. She eventually accepts that we will not sign for the birth certificate or social security number and totally cool, casual, says we just need you to sign that you receive the commemorative birth certificate. Remember I told you to listen for this one? Commemorative birth certificate. This document had the son's wet ink footprints on them along with his birth stats. Stats. Census. Status at birth. At birth. Not when he was born. It was a commemorative birth certificate. Come. Commemorative with a memorandum with a memorial. It does not look official. It's not on bond paper. But they still want him to sign. It's a negotiable instrument either way. They want it securitized. And the only way they can do it is with your signature. And in doing so, um, applying for the social security number and a birth certificate and you giving the signature they automatically have assignment to use the numbers attached to this commemorative birth certificate was a form to be signed the signature was to certify that we had received a copy of his footprints now there's a statute cited on the form However, the section code was incorrect. When he looked it up, there was no such code. So, he did a search on the entire California Legislative Code for the word footprint, read the correct statute, and to no surprise at all, there is no requirement that the footprints need to be signed for. Only that the footprints shall be provided to the parents upon request. So they were trying to say that they needed him to sign the document in order for him to receive the footprint document. No, that is not so. They are required to give him that document because they took those footprints from him and they cannot do that without his consent. So they need the signature to prove he consented. If they get that signature on that document, it is consent. Don't consent and they automatically have to give it back. Now this is where it got sticky. Tip. Tell the birth certificate clerk that we won't be signing for a commemorative birth certificate. Instantly, her face became red. She could barely get it out. You, you don't want your baby's footprints? No thanks. I think we can do that at home as well. Okay, remember though folks, they already took them. Don't 
let them do that if you can. When they do, though, you have to assert you want them back without the signature. They have to give it to you. They have to. It's the law. They cannot keep it simply because they want a signature. They can't say they can't give it to you without the signature because that is not the way the law is written. It says you do not have to sign for them and that they shall give it to you. Her look was priceless, disgust, shock, embarrassment. I could tell that they now knew that he knew that he knew the game was over. I never had to drop chapter and verse on these agents. He never had to use the Bible. He just stood in his biblical principle of questioning everything. Birth certificate clerk gathers herself and says, Okay, no problem. I just have to take all these papers back since you won't be signing them. I don't object as I had already made copies of everything. Very important. Every time they give you something, immediately copy it at least three times. Three copies. This is when I did some research on the statute that was cited for the release of the commemorative birth certificate. It's short and reads, shall be provided, with no mention of any requirement other than a request. So he went right back to the nurse's station, and this is why I commended him. He went right back and said, hi, we actually changed our mind and are now thinking of keeping the footprints. May we see them again? As soon as she hands them, the nurse pulls them off another desk and, no kidding, tears off the top white page of the duplicate signature form, gives me just the yellow copy underneath attached to the commemorative birth certificate to sign. I ask, what is this paper I'm being asked to sign? She says, it's just to certify that we received the footprints. <laughs> he says, all right. Because I couldn't find the law as it's cited here, and the only law on baby footprints says we have to be provided with them. See, she says it's just to certify that we received the footprints. They're not required to receive them. He is. She says, yeah, that law right there and underlines it in pen for me on the signature form. And when you read it, pursuant to Assembly Bill Number 2167, Section 10101.5 of the Health and Safety Code. Right. So I read the correct statute. And it doesn't require me to sign. This is the one they said was the one that they were referencing. And it's not even there. So he found it and it says it doesn't require me to sign anything in order to take these with me. So... This is where I calmly tear off the signature page in front of the five wide-eyed nurses. I, I appreciate it, but I'm just going to take these with me and I won't be signing anything. It's his. And comprehend people, they have no right to take it back from him. None. The way the law is stated, he received them, they gave them to him, he took what he needed, gave back what he didn't need. They can't force him to sign and they can't force him to give it back because he's supposed to be provided with them. Process is done. It's over. It's operated. Actions speak louder than words. They had one more trick though. So we're all set to leave, packing up the room, and I step out to go pull the car to the front for the, mo for, for the mom and the baby. He steps out but doesn't go get the car. He turns around and he says, I'm going back in. He says, I'm walking back up to the room. Two of the nurses are walking out of the room, giggling with themselves. Oh, we thought you left to the car already. No. He gets back in the room and right away asks Mom, what did they say to you right now? She says, <clears throat> what did you say to them up at the station? They came in here right now and asked if I felt safe. Was, uh, was I being forced into anything? Did I feel threatened? Do I need to tell them to call someone to protect me? And then I thank God. I had already accomplished everything I expected from the hospital visit. Because we know the real dirty moves only come when the game is already over for them. So we just wheeled out and left. No birth certificate, no social security number, no vaccines, no name registered with the hospital. And they have the placenta too. 
And so, so I urge people, please, please, pay attention to what you're doing at all times. Walk in the way. You don't need to fill out their paperwork. All you've got to do is question it and do your research. Show that they're the idiots. Show that they're the ones that are incompetent. If somebody's trying to practice law and issuing you a, a, a receipt asking why they're practicing commerce. If they're practicing medicine and trying to tell you the law, ask them why they're practicing the law. Very simple. So think about this stuff, people. And remember, um, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be doing this. I'm going to post my PayPal link and my other forum links. Please check them out. Please make sure you hit that share button, share the information, share the videos, and I hope you can hit that share button on that PayPal link and share some love. In the meantime, remember, I love you. God bless. Have a great night for you guys. Peace.